The Xbox is just a PC. I've heard this line more times than I can ever recall. It's up there with just use a Raspberry Pi or blast processing on the Genesis is real. If the Xbox is just a PC, then why in 2019 can we still not emulate the Xbox on a PC with a good level of compatibility and performance? Or maybe we can, and we just don't know it yet. What exactly do you know how to do? I can burp the alphabet. And in this video, that's what we're going to find out. The Xbox, or Direct Xbox as it was originally known by Microsoft, was developed with x86 PC hardware in mind. The Xbox kernel is essentially a custom version of Windows 2000 stripped down to its bare essentials for gaming performance. DirectX 8 is also fully implemented and includes pixel and vertex shader support. So if we consider the sixth generation of home consoles, which incidentally is my favorite generation of home consoles of all time, we have the PlayStation 2, the GameCube, and the Sega Dreamcast. Each of those systems are very well represented with emulators, especially something like Dolphin, which has an extremely high level of compatibility. So that really poses the question, where is the original Xbox emulation at? To answer this, we need to go back in time, back to around 2003. Back in those days, I was feverishly working on homebrew for the Xbox. At the same time, a developer known as Caustic decided to see if he could write an Xbox emulator that ran on a PC. His initial idea was simple. Rather than base the emulator from the Xbox's kernel, which was fully decrypted and cracked by the way, his emulator, known as CXBX, worked by first reading in the Xbox executable, or XBE, with its own kernel implementation based on high-level emulation. It would then patch any kernel instructions and would generate an executable that would run on a PC. Because many of the API calls on the original Xbox are based on Windows 32, they were mapped over without too much difficulty, and this idea seemed like the right approach at the time. Early builds of CXBX began to run Homebrew. This was very promising since almost all Homebrew was developed using the official Microsoft XDK. In other words, the same one that was used to develop commercial games. The thought process was that by intercepting and applying HLE instructions to the emulator, slowly more Homebrew and commercial games would begin to run. And initially, that's exactly what happened. By July of 2003, Turok Evolution was able to run its intro movie, and by 2004, it was in-game and playable, with other games like Panzer Dragoon Orta booting into its title screen. It seemed like CXBX would be a slam dunk, and pretty soon there would be a fast and easy-to-use Xbox emulator for the PC. But things, as we will learn, were not that simple. Hijacking the kernel and DirectX API calls via HLE turned out to be the wrong initial approach. If you consider a kernel and its API calls, each call begins at some address location. One problem with emulating the original Xbox in this fashion is that there were many XDK releases over time. I believe there were around 30 revisions that were released for the development of different games. This meant that a particular function call that was at a particular address location on one version of the XDK would very likely end up in a different memory location in a different revision of the XDK. And if we consider the original Xbox's 900 games, they were spread over many different XDK revisions. Therefore, the chances of compatibility being high were very, very low, almost zero to be honest. It also meant incompatibilities with Homebrew. For example, if the Homebrew was developed with one particular XDK revision that CXBX fully supported, but then it was recompiled and updated with a new version of the XDK, the chances are it would not work. And many of the commercial games available for the original Xbox contained customized libraries that were no way being emulated by CXBX's HLE whatsoever. Additionally, because CXBX contains its own implementation of the Xbox kernel, it means that all the Xbox API calls are mapped to Windows 32 API calls. In other words, the emulator is restricted to Windows only. Emulating the hardware via traditional low-level emulation techniques would have solved this problem, but this would require much, much more time to develop to understand the hardware and chips used inside the Xbox. The Xbox is just a PC, right? So we should be able to just emulate the CPU, the GPU and memory on a target Windows machine without too much trouble. Caustic ultimately stopped working on CXBX and the emulator was left in limbo. 
It was picked up by other developers such as Blue Shogun 96 and Destian, who kept it alive. More games became playable, such as Futurama and Smashing Drive, but the realization was setting in that CXPX was flawed and would never maintain a high compatibility. One of the biggest reasons why Xbox emulation isn't anywhere near as far as long as it should be, it's because of complacency. Back in the days when the original Xbox was around, a lot of people just assumed that emulating an Xbox would be trivial because, hey, it's just a PC. But that obviously turned out to be a false assumption. The other thing to mention is that complacency really has been a common thing on the original Xbox itself. And what I mean by that is if we compare it to something like the Nintendo Wii and the Wi-Fi connection that was available for the Nintendo Wii, on the very first day, people were capturing packets, trying to understand how the flow of network data worked back and forth, and ultimately came up with a homebrew solution to establish the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection themselves utilizing private servers. But back in the day when Xbox Live 1.0 was released, no such investigation or work was ever done to really kind of future-proof and safeguard Xbox Live in the event of any type of downtime or server closure, which is ultimately what happened in 2010. But things aren't all that bad. Out of the ashes of CXBX came CXBX Reloaded that was developed by Luke Usher. CXBX Reloaded is a very promising emulator, but as it's based on CXBX, it still uses HLE and its own implementation of the Xbox kernel. But much work has been done to emulate the Xbox's memory layout and it's slowly starting to migrate to using LLE or low level emulation. As of the making of this video, game compatibility stands at around 37 playable games with 109 getting in game. Now this may sound like a low percentage and it is, but with dedicated people working on this emulator I'm expecting to see these numbers increase over the next 12 months. In 2010, another new Xbox emulator appeared known as XQMU. This is a complete departure from CXBX. It's a low-level emulator that's portable and runs on different hardware. Even recently, there was a port to the Nintendo Switch. This emulator is still in very early stages of development, and unlike CXBX, requires an Xbox kernel BIOS, a boot ROM, a disk image, and an Xbox hard drive image to run. XQMU is in active development, and compatibility is starting to show great promise. There is a third emulator that we haven't really talked about, and that is the official Microsoft emulator that runs backward compatibility for Xbox original games, and it was known as Fusion on the Xbox 360 and Fission on the Xbox One and Xbox One X. When Microsoft announced backward compatibility for the original Xbox on the Xbox 360, they developed an internal emulator known as Fusion, and this matured into the codename Fission for the Xbox One and Xbox One X. Using backward compatibility, these emulators are indeed the best in class, but obviously are closed source and proprietary work that Microsoft owns. But he's hoping that one day, Microsoft can open up the Fission emulation to run on PCs. I did a deep dive on Fusion in a previous video, so if you want to know all about it and how it works in detail, check it out in the card above. As far as compatibility is concerned, CXBX Reloaded is ahead of XQMU, but I expect that slowly over time XQMU will catch up. While both emulators have a low percentage of compatibility at this time, some of the games that are playable are impressive. CXBX Reloaded has just implemented high resolution mode and things like Jet Set Radio Future look superb. There's also support for Sega Chihiro arcade hardware, so things like Virtua Cop 3 are playable as well. And finally, CXBX Reloaded has System Link support. So in other words, you and some friends can play Crimson Skies together with some tunneling software without the need of any Xbox hardware at all. That's pretty impressive. As it stands, things are still some ways off from where they should be. But the future is bright and I'm expecting good things finally for Xbox emulation in 2019 and beyond.
So there you have it guys, that's the state of original Xbox emulation in 2019. It's not the best, but it's getting better. And with the two emulators, the two standouts, CXB X Reloaded and XQMU, things are only going to improve. There are larger teams of individuals that are behind and working on both of these projects. And really what I would suggest is if you want to see more improvements to Xbox emulation on your PC or on your Linux machine, then get behind them, you know, support them on Patreon and really help them out. I'm sure both teams would very much appreciate that. Now, look, I, I do want to mention that this is not sponsored or I'm not affiliated with either of these teams. I'm just a fan of, you know, emulation just like you guys are. So get behind them if this is something that you are interested in. Well, guys, I'm going to leave it here for this video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.